Hello everyone, welcome to GS Core. I am Abhishek Saxena and I teach public administration. So this session uh, is about approach to public administration and more specifically about paper two of public administration. Right. So uh, as you are aware that in the mains examination, we have optionals worth 500 divided into 250 each of paper one and paper two for every optional and so is the case of public administration. So we are going to focus on paper two uh, as part of this session. Right. So uh, as part of this session, we are going to talk about the syllabus. Right. Certain trends. Syllabus, trends, sources, and certain hacks or tips to cover the syllabus in a far more effective manner. Right. So that is the entire idea of this session. Before I move forward, like I always say that it is the 250 marks that we need to attempt as candidates, but the paper is of 400 marks. Right. So. Uh, the paper generally what the trend has been is the one which I will be telling you here today <coughs> and that trend has held over the years right it has remained unchanged though the nature of questions have changed right but the overall marking scheme has remained the same however the UPSC might choose to surprise but that's a very unlikely possibility at the moment. But if it is a surprise, it is a surprise for everyone, right? So the question paper is divided into eight questions, right? Out of which question number one and five are compulsory, okay? And each question is of 50 marks, okay? So that means that the total question set that we get is basically 400 marks out of which we need to attempt 250. As I said, question number one and five are compulsory. So out of the remaining, while the section A is question number one to four, section B is question number five to eight. There is no guarantee that which unit will be asked where. So it's not a set pattern that certain units will be asked as part of you know, section A and certain units will be asked as part of section B. No, that is no guarantee. Uh, it can be jumbled. So out of the remaining questions of section A and B, three needs to be attempted, at least one each from each section. So you can choose to attempt, let us say, for example, question number two from section A and question number seven or eight from section B or question number six from section B and question number two and three from section A. So that makes the 250 marks which are there. Okay. Roughly, interestingly, we will see that while the first question remains same, that is five questions of 10 markers each, it is the other questions, non-compulsory questions with which we see certain diversification in paper one and paper two. While in paper one, the distribution of the 50 for each question is 20 plus 15 plus 15, right? In paper two, this 50 gets divided into 20 plus 20 plus 10, right? And that is where the actual issue is, the difference. So while in paper one, you get a variety of 10 marker, 15 marker and 20 marker. In paper one, you only have two types, 20 and 10. Right. So as a part of our preparation strategy, we need to remember this fact. That in paper two, it is either going to be a 20 marker or a 10 marker. Right. Clear. So that is the sort of an idea. Right. So while we talk about paper two, paper two has been titled in our syllabus as Indian administration. 
सो दिस हैज टू बी सीन इन द लाइट ऑफ अ फ्यू थिंग्स द बेसिक नॉलेज ऑफ जी एस सब्जेक्ट लाइक पॉलिटी एंड अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स एंड अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ इंडियन सोसाइटी these are in smaller numbers and this is in larger quantum right so this is one prerequisite which is there because it is these subjects like polity for example present you with a macro structure of how the edifice of indian administration is structured it's a parliamentary form of democracy there is executive legislature judiciary theory of separation of powers who does what etc budgeting accounting right uh elements of economy growth human development etc and social dynamics as in what happens where the, the caste is the reality the politics etc okay and in the light of paper 1 i have told you before that it is the subject of public administration in totality that demands heavy interlinkages between the papers and within the papers right so developing these interlinkages is very very essential for example if i am dealing with government of india the chapter of organizations in paper 1 assumes importance if i am dealing with personnel management in paper 2 the personnel administration here becomes important similarly is the case of financial management and financial administration so these interlinkages need to be kept in mind while writing paper 1 heavy dose of paper 1 a little glimpse of paper 2 and reciprocally while writing paper 2 while you are dis you know discussing the contemporary the practical aspects some theoretical grounding provided by paper 1 use of thinkers of paper 1 just a glimpse in your answers add value to the answers of paper 2 okay so that is something which is extremely extremely relevant and needed to score marks in paper 2 also this has to be seen in the light of contemporary development so news reading becomes important what is happening in the present discourse the administrative lacunas whether it is about corruption you know ethical issues involving civil servants right coverage of scheme policy programs scams okay e governance newer models emerging etc right so this is important we'll be looking at all the units of paper 2 red bear as to what we need to do about them right but it is important for us to remember that there are certain building blocks elementary building blocks which we should have a grip on to handle and cover paper 2 effectively right understood so that is the grand idea now through syllabus we will try and map trends and see hacks so paper 2 if we look at has 14 units right remember paper 1 had 12 units okay so the very first unit since it is indian administration involves the historical perspective evolution of indian administration upsc largely alludes to the idea of the mauryan administration that is through kautilya's arthashastra the mughal administration the british legacy so your history knowledge of gs will come handy and vis-a-vis -vis british uh, you know uh, sort of legacy other elements come in like 
Indianization of administration. Indianization of administration and public services. Also, certain further minuscule elements, for example, the revenue administration. district administration okay and local self government mind you we have divided or the upsc has divided the syllabus into various topics and subtopics but it is one exam in its entirety so when we talk about these things yes we will have to study each of them from various angles, the structure, you know, functioning of these administration, the goods, the bads, right, certain traits or features. At the same time, it is very, very essential for us when we study that we compare the existence, we compare, mind my words, we compare the existence of the various features of administration in these administrations. So whether we are looking at the concept of accountability, justice, good governance, what kind of an administration were they? Were they dictatorial, right? Obviously they were monarchies, largely they were monarchies or the colonial administration, but were they dictatorial? Were they welfare oriented? So those elements need to be looked at here also the consciousness whether they were gender sensitive administration whether they were centralized administration whether they were decentralized administration how did they control the swaths of territory that they uh, you know happened to rule all those elements the subtext given here the idea of linkage of this with paper one the concepts of authority the concepts of delegation the concepts of leadership, the nature of the rule, the nature of the king, all those things remain hidden. But you need to study. Okay, so the ideal way is that first we look at the structural perspective of each of them and then the functional perspective. And through the functional perspective, we build an understanding of the remaining three. And once we have done this, then we begin juxtaposition and comparison on the yardsticks. This is an orderly way of covering this particular unit. If we look at the unit itself, it occupies around 25 marks in the mains exam. Right? So the right approach is to build those small size packets and then build the larger picture. Okay. The second unit. The second unit is philosophical and constitutional framework of government we are talking about indian administration so it is about salient features value system the concepts like constitutionalism concepts like constitutionalism the idea of political culture okay bureaucracy and democracy bureaucracy and development mind you these are not generic things that we do in gs it they have to be studied across the spectrum from the application orientation or rather from theoretical to application orientation in toto so therefore thinkers are relevant here not just the thinkers that we study as part of paper one but also certain thinkers 
when we talk about constitutionalism and political culture for example almond and verba right so use of thinkers is there in paper too so somebody for the sake of just convincing you uh, you know might just suggest are paper 2 mein there is no need of thinkers you know it is very contemporary indian polity padlo ho gaya right you just read indian polity and it's a no it is one of the elements while yes the the idea of the salient features value premises is given by indian polity because the constitution itself act as the guiding light but the academic the theoretical the conceptual understanding of what do i mean by constitutionalism that there is a limited state there is not an unlimited state like a monarchy it is limited there are checks and balances the political culture whether it is assimilative how india has been progressing from dominant to participant political culture all those theoretical rootings are needed and hence the idea of this unit is to cover the basic aspects and the debates and the analysis assume great importance also it is not sufficient that we only have the bookish or the theoretical orientation you will also have to link it exhaustively and that is not just for paper 1 Uh, uh, I beg your pardon. That is not just for this unit. Cross paper too. You will have to link it with contemporary orientation. Right. So if I am talking about single party dominance, if I am talking about let us say dominance of parochial identity or the dominance of development discourse. i will have to link it with development dynamics anti development thesis development uh, concept of development administrative development development of administration that we go through in paper 1 right so that has to be linked so the right approach is that we study them individually and once we have the basic understanding then we graduate towards analysis and debates and once we are thorough with the analysis rooted in concepts then we provide the contemporary orientation in a way growing by bits and pieces and not consuming it as a whole while we are preparing it okay this unit again is approximately of 25 marks out of 400 right remember uh, uh, you know uh this is as per the figures uh that i have arrived uh by analyzing the papers of 2016 to 2022 seven good seven years so that is what it gives us on an average i am telling you the marks okay understood so everything has to be seen from the perspective of paper 1 administration certain concepts of administration because it is a public administration paper it is not a gs paper so it has to be cloaked in that vocabulary in, with that treatment of that specialization of a subject next unit 3 public sector undertakings right if we look at the questions a central point of this is the idea of autonomy accountability and control within these public sector undertakings the impact of liberalization privatization and globalization though the syllabus mentions only liberalization and privatization globalization is hidden right also the idea some historical concept that how these public sectors undertakings came into being in india right their structure so remember paper 2 is more application oriented so everywhere there will be structural and functional orientation in every unit right so all this has to be studied 
so the right way to study it is the history forms and with each form the idea of autonomy accountability control right and then once we have done this then further see how this is in lpg so structure and forms right then the issue of autonomy accountability control and then the lpg and all this lays with contemporary developments for example you have this corporatization of ordinance factory board concepts of disinvestment air india example is there right so all that has to be done so progressively we have to expand the envelope right if we look at this particular unit easily 20 marks 20 marks right so that is how we need to go about it and remember in every unit there will be a shadow of paper 1 because that is where the theory is okay so centralization decentralization over centralization command control all those concepts will remain okay next Unit 4, Union, Government and Administration. Union, Government and Administration. Here obviously a heavy shadow of polity, but you know all this under the light of polity plus paper 1 plus contemporary development. Right. So it is about Things like executive, legislature, judiciary, their structure, their forms. So that structural plus functional elements will remain. So analysis, debates around them. Okay. Recent trends, intergovernmental relation. So while we have executive, legislature, judiciary, we also have center state, local. We also have agencies like Finance Commission. Okay. The idea of structure, the various important nodes, PMO, Secretariat, Cabinet Secretariat, Department. Okay. Remember, we talked about organizations. So, Headquarter and Field Agency debate, plugging with this particular unit okay ministries central secretariat boards commissions attached offices field offices so that routing of organizations and thinkers will come handy in providing you that ground that solid theoretical ground and the functional orientation and structural orientation of the government of India under the light of polity and contemporary issues will make your reading and learning wholesome when you are reading this, studying this yourself. So that is the way. So while we will study these things individually, right, we need to study these things individually, we need to constantly, you know, polish it with other things so the mentioning of articles of the constitution the contemporary discourse and the theorists in paper one with examples in reality they will enhance the appeal of your learning also it will make your learning wholesome because it won't remain just bookish or just superficial of what is happening it will be a marriage of the two okay therefore providing you far more detailed view of the things this is an important unit because it is 
approximately 40 marks in the paper okay so it is going to be like that the elements of the indian administration juxtaposition with the theoretical grounding polity and contemporary affairs but remember it is not just contemporary neither it is just theory it is a marriage of two so you need to have that strong foundations otherwise your answer will look superficial okay next is unit 5 that is plants and priorities so obviously it is related to plants right so the study historical study of the erstwhile planning commission reasons for coming up of niti ayog right uh, the idea the overall planning the changing nature of planning so the impact of lpg and economic reforms from imperative to indicative planning these are the highlights the role of the planning commission vis-a-vis -vis the role of the planning commission and finance commission so it is not written the finance commission is not written here but can be answered right so these things are important okay obviously the historical perspective which plan did what so the knowledge of economics comes handy but it has to be cloaked and dressed up with the entire costume of public administration. It should not be pure economics. It should have economy, quality and overall the public administration. That is how we need to keep it. The recent trends, for example, the Niti Ayo comes with a vision document. Earlier we used to have a plan. Right? The various surveys. The nature of the organization, how planning commission was a far more dominant organization and Niti Ayo comes across as a far more decentralized, far more consensus oriented organization. So the structural functioning of Niti Ayo and planning commission. So all those elements need to be kept here. Easily this unit is worth 20. Right. Next comes unit 6. And mind you, questions can be interdisciplinary. I'll tell you how after this. So it is state government and administration. Here, we will be examining the idea of union state relations. Okay, so the element from polity comes of federalism. Cooperative, combative, fiscal. All those trends will emerge. Right. So that happens. Also the idea of legislative financial relations. So while the bedrock, the context is provided by polity. It is the administrative angle that we explore here. Delegation, decentralization, cooperation, communication, all those things. Okay. Then comes the institutions, governor, CM. Remember, we talked about president, prime minister, PMO. They are in central, uh, in the union administration unit. Okay, district administration, decentralization. Right, role of finance commission here also. So, a question can be both ways. Can be tagged here and in the unit 4 of union government and administration depending upon where the weight of the question is so the idea is that the subject is very very integrated because you are talking about union state relations here the next unit uh, is about district administration district administration since independence it is about the office of collector the role of district collector Union state local relationship. Okay, development, law and order,
here also you will talk about secretariat you know directorate etc so this unit unit number 4 6 7 they are very well intimately related the question can be about the fiscal federalism the union state local relations so you will have to involve elements from other you know units there as well right for our study we have divided them into silos in the sense that okay we are talking about state administration but there can be a question about comparison between the uh, you know uh, chief secretary of a state and the cabinet secretary how the administrative powers are different there at both the places what is the role functioning goal of the organizations that they had so we are strictly talking about the pubad lens here so there can be a comparison in two so the question immediately becomes abstract or interunitary and questions like these do get asked if you will see pyqs you will come to them. okay so these are very very related so hence this these concepts when we study union state and district administration they need to be studied totality one after the other and that's the right approach you study each of them individually to understand them as learning packets and then develop that interlinkages and once you have developed those interlinkages lays them up with the contemporary affairs right so whether it is about you would have heard that the there was an issue regarding the transfer of bureaucrats on central deputation here the unit of civil service will also come right but the core issue is center state administrative relations right so that is how we need to study them in an integrated manner i'll tell you so unit 4 union government i talked about that it is spanning 40 marks on an average the plans and priorities is 20 marks i gave you that and then the state government and administration again 40 marks and district government and admin, district government and administration rather district administration again 30 marks so across these three units you will see 110 marks such a major chunk and once we have understood the philosophy and integration it is just you know these 110 marks are in our pocket they are in our pocket very easy to understand because light you know garnishing with paper one and theories no very detailed exhaustive reading needed and the indian polity basics you just have to learn the nuances of the administration and these topics in minute details and these 110 marks nobody can take away so that is the impact of these units next next is the unit of civil services unit 8 so it is all about civil services right remember we studied uh, the personnel administration the idea of accountability control okay then we can study the unit of civil services where in the constitutional provision again same concepts recruitment training capacity building good governance code of conduct discipline neutrality activism all those concepts feature remember we studied these concepts in paper one as well you just have to make those linkages as well as the contemporary development for example there was this mission karam yogi reforms etc we just have to link them this again is a very important unit spanning 40 marks so while in paper one we studied what is training what is recruitment from a conceptual point of view in paper two we are going to read the similar things from the implementation functional analytical point of view that what actually happens okay training is this capacity building is this theoretically it is okay but practically what happens what are the issues pros and cons 
so that analytical orientation is needed next is the unit of financial management and this gets straight away linked to the unit 12 financial administration of paper 1 budget as a political document parliamentary control over budgeting you see all the functional elements emerging here role of finance ministry accounting auditing the controller general of india cag cga controller general of accounts all these institutions are now coming in they are in paper one we're talking about the theory also you can use thinkers here for example often a thinker called Wildewiski has been asked regarding budget as a political document there you need that sort of a theoretical grounding what kind of auditing accounting techniques are there accrual accounting you know performance based budgeting etc all those things form here and they are linked with paper one so very easy catch these are the you know these papers are very easy catch 25 marks simply just like i gave you in the introduction the light of general studies subject society history economy polity with the light of paper one of public administration contemporary orientation and we are done it's very easy okay next unit 10 administrative reforms since independence before i move further into this let me tell you if i am reading psu i will read reforms in the psu if i am reading state government i will read reforms in the state government if i am reading district administration i will read reforms in the district administration if i'll read civil services i will read reforms in the civil service so those things are already there apart from them when we say we are here looking at it there we were looking at it from the sector specification okay psus ministries department etc here we will look at it from the functional uh, you know uh, uh, the the specification would be from a different lens that is major committees and commissions anthanam committee on prevention of corruption this and that okay <coughs> reforms in the sectors like finance <coughs> human resource development right doing away with the railway budget human resource development no interview for c or d post right lateral entry all those things okay and the problems of implementation so again you will have polity contemporary orientation and the you know linkages within the paper too just like i told you civil services state government this district administration etc etc so the linkage will be drawn there right so that is needed the question you think the question is of district administration i might think that the question is from reforms okay so that is needed so while doing this unit we will have to progress in an orderly fashion see the committee commission issue recommendation status of implementation this channel has to be followed to understand holistically and then pin this up with the overall issue whether it has been implemented not implemented whether something remains or something does not remain or whether there are some ripple effects of it very easy okay this unit is easily of 20 marks and like i said it depends you know it is across spread across now unit 11 is about rural development rural development here institutions and agencies 
since independence that means evolution of local self government at rural level simple okay various programs and strategies again the concept of decentralization decentralization panchayati raj institutions so there is a gram sabha you know gram panchayat panchayat samiti this and that overall structure functions functioning functionaries and the issues and the the 73rd constitutional amendment act all this has to be linked okay easily of 30 marks so after the historical perspective we have to link this here we can link it with other uh, you know conceptual arguments of autonomy accountability control functioning effective implementation public service delivery democratic decentralization impact of liberalization privatization globalization then we can further branch out okay related to let us say women related to diverse issues like climate change etc so a heavy dose of contemporary orientation is similar is the case of the next unit that is the so rural programs like Manarega, etc., Jal Jeevan Mission. Next unit is Unit 12. It is about urban local government. Similar issues apart from this, the certain debates, for example, global local debate. Okay, concepts like neo localism here the development dynamics chapter of paper 1 not just here in in the rural development unit also you can link okay city management issues of let us say garbage disposal pollution various programs and policies all this has to be done in the context of administration for example if i say in urban i give you the example the administrative example that there are multiplicity of agencies one agency digs the road other uh, you know one agency builds the road other agency digs the road conflict right lack of holistic planning so we will have to look at the administrative structural functional issues from the lens of administration where there is lack of goal clarity lack of command lack of control so, in the light of paper one learnings and the basic concepts of public administration, along with it, the contemporary orientation, the polity orientation, right? And that all has to be clubbed together to bring about. This unit again serves. Okay. So, that is the approach. We study them in isolation then bring them together and build the larger picture it is like building a collage then the 13th and the second last unit is law and order administration law and order administration also includes the legacy aspect for example british legacy Right, so is there? I mean, that British legacy is there in Unit One as well of this paper, right? But with a far more focused approach of law and order, we will see. So the structure of Indian police getting evolved, the Thana system, the DGP system, the Commissionerate system, the attitudinal dispositions of the Indian police, right? Whether it is a service or not. What Irish constabulary system is it following or is it following the uh, English Bobby system? That is there or the metropolitan system as they say. Right. 
these things. Then the various investigative agencies. So not just investigative agencies, agencies which are hidden, CBI, NIA, etc. National Counter Terrorism Center. Okay. Role of central and state agencies, state CID, state police, paramilitary forces, that is CAPFs. Okay. Topics like insurgency, terrorism. Also, topics like uh, cyber crime, narco which might not be explicitly given in the syllabus. Then the concepts like criminalization of politics. Hidden is politicization of criminals. Police public relations. Reforms in police. Though we have studied reforms before, reforms in police. I am talking about Santhanam committee. It relates to the investigative agencies as well. Right. So things are interrelated. That ways we need to study this particular unit. So each topic, the given head and the subtext, which is not given. <clears throat> Prakash Singh's judgment would come under police reforms. Right. Security of tenure. Again, a concept, but a reform here. So these things are there right so it comes handy with the knowledge of gs internal security right so it is an asset if you know internal security in general also concepts like uh, the idea of criminalization of politics politicization of criminals etc they also help so you will need to have historical perspective, etc., contemporary orientation as well. Okay. So that is all about this unit. This unit again easily covers 30 marks. 30 marks. Okay. So while studying this unit, please remember while a simple self study of sorts vis-a-vis -vis these things in isolation is needed but that is not sufficient you will have to interlink with various dimensions and also contemporary orientation last but not the least significant issues In Indian administration. When we talk about this, yes, the syllabus does give us certain issues. Remember ethics in administration in paper one, here values in administration. Values in public service. Values in public service. Regulatory commissions. Remember we studied regulation in paper 1, regulatory commission. Then the idea of NHRC, National Human Rights Commission. While it gives NHRC, it might ask NCPCR. Who knows? Right. So that is not given as part of this. Then the coalition regimes. Problems of administration in coalition regimes. That how there is. Now we will involve the concept of paper 1. How there is. Obstruction in decision making. Role and goal clarity is not there. Power, authority, leadership. All those concepts will come here. Okay. Citizen administration interface. Corruption. So when we are talking about corruptions, aren't we talking about reforms? All accountability unit in paper one. We are talking about it. Then disaster management. So just through disaster management, I want to explain that what will be the orientation. The orientation again, like I said, structural plus functional plus analytical. So structure, okay, there is a National Disaster Management Act, there is a National Disaster Management Authority, Cabinet Secretary, Crisis Management Group, this, 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 structure. 
functioning what they do right analysis how good are they or how bad are they at what they do so these are the disaster management frameworks this is what is lacking analysis that what happens can the local governments be made partner here what should be the further enhancement in the role of state governments to mitigate a disaster newer concepts like disaster resilience post disaster relief capacity enhancement training of disaster management right fine tuning of policies all those things will come here similarly we will have to look at those interlinkages if i am talking about an institution how good an institution is or how bad it is in the present times right so this is how we will link it it is such a diverse topic that it comes of 60 marks because anything can be there today there might be an issue of let us say a challenge of cryptocurrency a newer challenge of centralization or over centralization in regimes right dehumanification dehuman dehumanization of the state machinery because everything is getting computerized so that can be there so it basically you know invokes the larger and the contemporary issues prevailing in the indian society so while the syllabus mentions us certain heads we should not be limited to these heads and keep a tab on the contemporary developments the bypassing of legislative accountability can be there okay so all these issues are there as emerging issues right and this is of 60 marks out of the marks that i have given you the total becomes 425 which is near 200 as i said that there are multiple areas in which questions overlap okay so that is about the syllabus trends and the way to approach these units when we study now uh, before we end this session let me talk about sources sources are fairly simple in the sense that you have already noticed by now that a lot of contemporary orientation is needed but a bedrock of solid theoretical grounding is indispensable so while we have paper one with us apart from paper one what we need is the basic knowledge of polity economy somewhat history vis-a-vis -vis british legacy society right so that basic knowledge is needed again ignu notes offer you a very good resource but yes consume them with a pinch of salt because they are dated they might not be attuned with certain contemporary changes in the administration which might have happened for example a new ministry of cooperation was created so they might not cover that then there is a book by Professor Arora, Rakesh Arora and Goel of Indian Administration. This book provides you a basic grounding. Then there is a book by Vidyut Chakrabarti. You can read that book as well, but I prefer Arora and Goel because that provides you that basic grounding. But once you have all of it, right, you will have to explore more explore more in the sense that it is not sufficient it is not sufficient then you ought to read the news then magazines like yojana and kurukshetra for example august 2021 issue of yojana covered the civil services entirely so the unit of civil services can be done from this yojana entirely you, you, you will not need any other source. So magazines like Yojana, Kurukshetra are indispensable vis-a-vis -vis this particular unit. Okay. So these are the standard sources which you should study. I would suggest cover GS and this, then this. You can leave this and these are indispensable. Or if you want, some you know more reading you can read apart from this the source is wide that is internet contemporary issues can be analyzed 
then I will give you a one-stop value addition enrichment solution. And that is the second ARC. If you have your basics in place and you read the second ARC reports, while if you are short of time, you can go for summary, but I would urge you, implore you to read reports. You will require nothing else and mind my word, nothing else for paper two to get that sort of a analytical depth. Immediately analysis, case studies, examples, everything is given in second ARC. So second ARC is indispensable. It will help you understand reforms. It will help you understand the nuances. For example, there is a report on e-governance. There is a report on local government. There is a report on disaster management. Everything gets covered. So second ARC remains the most relevant source for the paper two. Yes, basics can be covered from here, but a large amount of value addition, enrichment, interlinkages can only come from here. Second ARC provides you with concepts like MOU, principle of subsidiarity, etc., which have been asked directly in the paper. The corruption angle it has been asked directly in the paper the e-governance architecture the cycle has been asked directly in the paper given in the second arc digitization computerization networking linkages communication that is there the models of e-governance for example uh, g to g government to government government to citizen government to businesses government to employees all of them have been given in the second arc you can cover entire topics from second ARC and that is the best source, okay? You will have to shell out less labor in developing that analytical perspective if you cover second ARC. The whole paper too gets very nicely covered. Whatever little is left, for example, historical perspective, this and that, that can be done from the standard source and the IGNU material, right? For example, the for evolution, I would say IGNU material is even better than what Professor Arora and Goel have. Right? So that is better. So based on that, you can study this paper and approach this paper in a very methodical manner, not just this, the public administration. Consume those little learning packets and then build the bigger picture and then make the linkages. Very easy. If you will be systematic, administration means a systematic effort. If you will be systematic, nothing can stop you in mastering this subject. Right? So that's all for this session. Thank you.